Hi there, this week I made this high luminescence ring light with which I'm currently shooting right now. It's almost pitch dark here, it's 12 a.m. and you can see how bright it is. This ring light is made of just 4 10 watt LEDs. The forward voltage is 12 volts and the total current draw is 1 ampere. So you can use any power supply that is lying around your house to power the ring light. The use of a ring light is to bring the beauty in the skin. That's why you see a lot of YouTubers use this kind of a setup for their makeup videos or when they are recording their vlog. I can't wait to show you how I made this. So let's get going. I started out by designing the housing on 123D design. It's a free software from Autodesk. You can download it from the link below. It's available for Windows and Mac and even for iPad. I don't know how anybody can design an iPad unless it's an iPad Pro. Then I exported it to my SD card and the print ran for about 8 hours. I set 50% in fill and used ABS. I wanted the casing to be black in color but the inside has to be in white so it bounces maximum amount of light. So I just painted it and let it dry before continuing. Now I position the heatsink for the LED and mark them. The LED generates a lot of heat so heatsinks are very important for longer life of the LEDs. Do not forget to add them. Then I drilled some holes and attached it with 3mm nuts and bolts. With some hot glue at regular intervals, I started sticking the LED strip. It's high powered 3528 cool white SMD LED strip with 120 LEDs per meter. Then at the end, using a box cutter, I trim the LED strip at the designated points. I repeated the same step to add the second row of LED strips on the outside and the inside. Now let's look at the connections. Here are the outer and the inner LEDs represented by these circles. I connect all the strips in parallel first, then here are the high power LEDs and they are connected in parallel too. One of the end terminals of the 10 watt LED are connected in parallel to the strip. Now all can be powered at once. Here I bring in the power supply, the switch and the DC jack. The power supply is 12 volts and 2 amps. The power supply is connected to 10 watt LEDs through the switch finally and that's how the connections are made. I began by cleaning the terminals and making parallel connections. After each connection, I make sure I test. Here I'm checking the outer rings. I test each of the 10 watt LEDs before mounting them. Then after applying a little bit of flux, I start soldering them in parallel. A final test to check if the connection was right before mounting them to the heatsink. A little bit of thermal paste will keep the heat transfer efficient. The LEDs are screwed in place with the same bolt that I used for the heat sink. Now when I test, I could see all the LEDs, both the 10 watt LED and the LED strips are lit up. Using hot glue, I secure the DC jack and final switch connections are made. Now moving on to make the diffuser. I used plexiglass or acrylic sheet as we call in India. Using the housing as measurement, I draw the line and start cutting the plexiglass. To get clean cut, it is important to score the sheet as much as possible. Then move it to the edge and a sharp bend will break the sheet. I trace the edges of the ring light onto the sheet with a little bit of overhang. To help cutting it with the jigsaw, I drill the pilot holes using Forstner bit, then carefully cut along the lines. To mount the plexiglass to the housing, I drill some holes through the housing and mark the plexiglass. Then on the markings, I extend the holes and countersunk them. Using some 4mm nut and bolt, I was able to put both together. Now on to finishing the plexiglass overhangs. I left it a bit heavy so that I can sand it later. This was the best way I found to get a clean round edge. After I did some sanding, I set it to see how it looks. 
As you can see, it was more transparent than I wanted it to be. Of course, bringing it far helped, but that wasn't the option. In a previous failed attempt, I found out that by sanding it, I can increase the diffusion. Here you can see the difference. So using a 22 grit sandpaper, I gave both the sides some good sanding and then cleaned it with a clean cloth. Now it's much better. On this hole, I initially planned to drop in the ball head, but I put the DC jack there. So I have to make some space now. Luckily, it's easy with LED strips. I can cut out a little of the strip at the designated mark and make some room. This is the ball head that I'm going to use. I bought it for 150 rupees. After marking the placement of the nut, I drilled to make the hole. I mix some two component araldite adhesive. I had to carefully add this just around the nut and not to the bolt. When it was half dry, I removed the ball head and set it again so that if in case any glue was there, it would come out. And with that, the ring light is done. I was able to do all this in just a day. So it's a quick DIY project for anybody who wants to start blogging. I know that I used a 3D printer to create this ring light which is kind of cheating when you say it's a DIY video. But you can use the lid of a tub like this to create the housing. I used 3D printing because I wanted to learn how to design many useful things around. Improvements. I've ordered few more LEDs but it will take a little bit of time to reach me. In the future, I'll be adding more LEDs to this ring light to create a lot of brightness so that I can even shoot macro shots. Building a battery pack for the ring light will be a huge advantage. I have to design a universal lock locking mechanism for the battery that will go with all the DIY builds that I do in the future. So subscribe to this channel to see how I get those things done. Before I leave, here are some more projects that I would love to share. Follow me on Instagram to see what I'm working on right now. And if you enjoyed this video, please like it by clicking on the thumbs up below. Also share this video with your friends so it helps me a lot. Until next time, happy learning.